take a second and welcome you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for choosing to spend your Sunday in the house of God. If you're a guest with us, I just want to give you a special welcome and say thank you. Thank you so much for choosing to be here today. And if you didn't have a chance to meet one of our guests and greeters at the door as you were making your way in, make sure you do that before you leave today. They've got some information they want to put in your hand and a gift that we'd love to give you just as a way of saying thanks for being here today. Uh, we just love you. And uh, we're going to go back into a time of worship. So if you would, go ahead and posture your heart for praise today. Can we do that? Jesus, you're worthy. We give you our praise in this place today, God. We're expecting miracles in this place today. Come on, Jesus, move in this place. This is a house of worship. This is a place of praise Where every demon trembles Where we proclaim your name Yes, it is. This is a house of healing Come on. Our hearts are full Jesus, every 
to the feet of Jesus, everything in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. Yeah, come on, sing it again. So come alive in the name, come alive. Yeah. Lazarus, get out of your grave. Come on, sing it out. We bring everything to the feet of Jesus, everything. In the name of Jesus, this is a house of miracles. Can I just tell you, there's power in praising through your issues. There's power in praising through whatever you got going on. There may be a storm, but don't let that, don't let that make you sit down and choose to not enter into this place today. We're carrying some heavy burdens in this place. I feel it. I'm mad. I feel it. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use my weapon. My weapon is a melody, and I'm going to sing it to the king in this place today. And I encourage you to rise up to the challenge and do the same. There's some stuff going on, yeah, but your God is bigger than whatever you got going on in this place. So go on ahead and make up your mind to praise your way through the situation. It might not make sense right now, and that's okay. But I can promise you this, that if you choose to surrender and you choose to offer praise despite whatever junk you got going on God is gonna meet you in that place he's gonna offer you peace he might not give you all the details but he'll give you some peace so that you can withstand the process right so we're gonna go into this again we're gonna sing come alive and I want you to sing it sing it from a place of being a living sacrifice it's got to cost you something more to mean anything it's got to cost you something so let's get loud in this place let's This is a house of miracles. We thank you for what you're doing right now. I feel it, Jesus. Mm. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship you, God. We wait on you, God. We wait on you, God. moving in this place today. Come on, receive it. Lift up your hands and surrender. Go on ahead and transfer that weight that you've been trying to carry onto the king who said, cast your cares on me. Cast your burdens on me. Come on, do it in this place. Such a sweet freedom when you let go of the reins that don't belong to you anyway. Oh, Jesus, move. To do something in this place, mighty, great. You're setting it. You're setting captives free. You're breaking chains of bondage. I feel it. I feel it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
the Lord the river still flows the river is open again the days of the outpouring of my anointing of my spirit are upon you I am about to unleash my presence among you in ways that you have never known before a freedom that you have never experienced is about to come to your life. Some of you who have never felt a freedom to worship the way that you're about to worship, there is about to be a freedom that's coming to you. There's an outpouring of my anointing of my Holy Spirit, my emboldening, my power that is about to come upon you. I'm calling my church for such a time as this. I'm opening up the doors of my church so that the neighbors will hear my praise and my worship. I want the city to hear my voice. I want the city to know my power. I want my presence to go with you when you leave this place into your jobs, into your schools, into your homes, into the places where you go. I'm going before you and I'm opening doors before you. And you, my church, my sons, my daughters who walk in purity will be my hands and my feet and my eyes and my ears. And you will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. And you will cast out the devils. And you will no longer have to call for someone else to come and help you. But I am your helper. I am your peace. I am your strength. I am your guard. I am your shield. I am your protector. And I'm going with you and before you. And you are going to operate in my anointing. You are my church and my power, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead, dwells in you. And you are my sons and my daughters and my church, my hands and my feet. And you are going to take my message of peace and power not only to your area, not only to your neighborhood or your city, but I'm about to send some of you far away, 
far away to carry this anointing, to carry this word. Thus saith the Lord. are open. Come on. Come on. Come on. What do you need? God, I want that word to be my word. If that's you, come on. Get down here. God, I want that word to be my word. I want to be. I am open. I will be that son or daughter. I will be that voice. I will be that person. If you'll call me, if you'll use me, Lord, I'll be that person. If that's you, come on. Come on. It's time for faith to overcome fear. Somebody say amen. It's time for work to overcome apathy. God did not call us in these last days to rest in his presence. Do you hear that? God didn't call you to rest in this moment. Why are times so dark and dreary? Why is so much fear among us? Why are things so crazy? It's because the devil is fighting because he knows God's about to come back and get his church. And he does not want his church. God does not want his church hiding under their bed somewhere. But he's raising himself up some warriors, some spiritual sons and daughters that are about ready to go to battle. You've had God's calling you out and saying, I'm raising you up. I'm raising you up. That that you're feeling in your spirit is not just, it is not carnality and human fleshly anger. That is my righteous indignation. I am angry at the devil. I am angry at hindering spirits. And I'm raising up a church that's going to get full of my Holy Spirit and is going to do my bidding for me. I need warriors to go to war for me. God's raising up warriors. I have prayed for years for revival that is coming. And I've always said, God, when you do it, just don't leave us out. Here at Trinity, Lord, just don't leave us out. Let us be a part of it. In church, we've been faithful. We've been faithful in a few things. We've been faithful. We've been faithful, and this is the place that you can trust in these next weeks and months. Listen, this is the place where that you're going to feel comfortable bringing that person that needs miraculous healing because you know when they get here, God's going to touch them. This is the place where you're going to be, that you're going to feel comfortable bringing your lost loved ones because you know when they get here, God's going to save them. This is where you're going to be able to bring those people that you encounter out there that are struggling with addiction because you know that when they get here, God is going to set them free. There's power in his presence. And his spirit is flowing in this place. And it's not just a one-time thing. It's not today. He's been brewing. It's been brewing a long time. He's been moving a long time. He's been seeing if this was a place where he could trust his anointing to. You've been seeing, is this a place I can, a, a people I can trust with my anointing? And now he's about to start sending them through those doors. People that need deliverance. People that need to be set free. People that need to be healed. People that need to be restored. God, we need your power. If there was ever a generation that needed your power, it's this one. Our world is so inundated with the lies of the enemy that many of your own that call themselves your sons and daughters have cowered in fear of the lies of the devil. But today you're raising us up. Lord, I pray 
for every person in this, within the sound of my voice. Because some of them are not in this room, but they're with us by the live stream because the Holy Spirit directed them here today. Other countries, other places, other cities, because God, you're needing a spark. You want a spark every place. So you you brought them here today so that that fire could be lit in their soul. Baptize us right now, I pray, in the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Fill this house with your power. Pour out a double measure of your anointing and power and Holy Ghost in this place right now. If you want to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, raise up both your hands and say, Lord, I'm ready. I'm open. I'm ready. Come on. Raise them up. Holy Ghost. Come on, Holy Ghost. Come on, raise those hands. I want to be filled today. I want to be refilled today. I want to be filled and I want to be refilled. If that's you, raise up your hands. Raise them up. Raise them up. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, fall. Fall. church is praising <clears throat> where is the young man in his 30s where is the young man in his 30s who has a call on his life but he has anger in his soul and he can't figure out why God hadn't put him where he's supposed to be who am I talking to the young man in his 30s who felt a calling on his life but he has anger. He deals with anger. He's just angry about something. Things have happened. Things have made him upset. And he's become angry. And therefore, he has not been able to, to walk in his calling. Come on. I know you're here. Give me specific stuff like that. Who are you? Where is the young man with a calling on his life? Where is he? He's in his 30s. 35, 6, 7. Calling on his life. Knows there's a calling on his life or something. Doesn't know what it is. But he just knows that he's so angry he can't move past it I'm gonna wait on you a minute you say why are you calling me out preacher because the Lord is about to set you free he said your day has come he knows he knows he understands what you've been going through he understands yeah he said your day has come He understands how you've held on to some things. You've held on to some things in bitterness and anger. People did some things to you and said some things to you that you've, not been, you've never been able to forgive. You've loved the Lord for a long, long time, but you've never been able to forgive and you've never been able to be free. You've never been able to forgive. But God says, my calling is without repentance. I've not changed my mind about you. I did not change my mind. You have not wasted the years because I can give you back what the locust has tried to take away from you. I'm bestowing that mantle. I'm bestowing that power on you from this day forward. It's a marked day in your life. You'll begin to see days and weeks and years as they come and go. You'll begin to see how I've opened doors. You'll begin to see how I'm elevating you to a position that you thought wasn't possible because you thought too long had gone by. But I'm about to open some doors. If you'll continue to seek me, if you'll continue to listen to me 
if you'll continue to follow me, I'm going to lead you to places that you thought you'd never go. And you're going to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. And I'm going to lead you to men and women who have some of the same kind of struggles that you have so that you can help in their deliverance. You'll speak words of wisdom and encouragement to them. And I'm putting my spirit on you again today. I have not forgotten, but I have called you and I'm reminding you today. Be from the anger. Turn loose of the anger. Remember that vengeance is mine and I'll take care of it, Cody. Turn loose of it and receive the anointing that I have for you right now. Rest in your mind and a power for your spirit. In the name of Jesus. to do something different today and we're all right with that aren't we are we okay with that There's a woman, and I'm not going to tell you how old she is, but I, I guess she might not like that. <laughs> but she's not old, but she's afraid. Something that she fears is a tumor is in her body, and she's afraid. And she's been seeking the Lord not been sleeping she's been just discouraged because she's been thinking about her family her kids and what could happen if this is what she's afraid it is come on who am I talking to hurry hurry where is she just been plaguing your mind dealing with the the what ifs what if this is it huh is that you amen do you do you know do you do you just fear or have you already been to a doctor okay where where do you think it's at somewhere somewhere in the in, in in here somewhere like your side or something right amen and you've just been worried amen raise up both of your hands ladies laying hands on her and believing deborah's got some oil right here come here deborah anoint her with oil now lay hands on her ladies Lay hands on her. Healing. 
Come on, church. We're praying for a miracle right now. God's about to receive glory in a miracle. Thank you. Touch her right there, Holy Ghost. Right there, Holy Ghost. Healing, I pray. No more fear. No more loss. Cast out all fear, God. Give her perfect peace. Tonight, let her sleep the best she's slept in weeks. Some of you are on the platform and some of you are, are in other places serving and you can't do this. But all of those of you who are uh, either journey group leaders or small group leaders in our church, would you all come and join me? I want you to come and join me and line up across the front. Amen. And Brad, Brad, would you come? Brad's one of our pastors. I want Brad to come here. Brad, the Lord laid you on my heart this morning. Uh, you, you may not know this, but he's... You and Angela are about to lay hands on some people for deliverance. Amen? And so if, you, if you're in this room and you're struggling, come on. Come on, folks, all across here. Just line up across. There's going to be a bunch of them because we've got a lot of folks that are serving here that are they're leading these small groups and leading these journey groups. If you are struggling, shit. This mic doesn't like me this morning. i got a dead spot over there. If you're struggling with addiction, some have struggled with it for a long time that are here today. We don't need to know what it is, but suffice it to say that the Lord says He is more than enough to set you free. Gambling, pornography, alcohol chemical dependence either legal, illegal or legal there's some in here in this room that are dependent upon medications that a doctor's actually given them and they, you, know, you know you should have stopped it a long time ago if that's you you come up and let them pray for you there's some people in this room that are saying Pastor, I want to operate like you said, but I need to be filled with that Holy Ghost. I need to be filled with that power. Whoever that is, I want you to come over here and let these two men right here lay hands on you and pray for you. They're going to lay their hands on you and believe that God's going to fill you with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Some of you need salvation. You need to come to Jesus. These two guys right here are going to pray for you. They know how to lead you to Jesus, and they're going to pray for God to save you today. You come down in a minute and get with them. There are people in this room who just need a miracle. You just need a miracle. Any of these, I need a miracle, I need a miracle, or I need healing, go to one of these. If you feel like God is calling you to ministry, and you just want somebody to pray with you about confirming that, I want you to come right here to Sudi and Kendra, right here. Right, right. Any healing, restoration, the message this morning that I'm not going to preach was that Jesus is more than enough. He is life itself. Maybe next week I'll preach it. He is life itself. He's more than enough to do everything that we need. And so anything that you could need, these people are here to pray with you about. I want you just to get out of your seat. Come down here, line up, and let these folks pray for you. This team's going to lead us, and we're just going to, we are, this is a house of prayer. 
and we're do, this is what we're going to do this morning. We're going to wait and let God set us free and let God heal us and let him fill us with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Let him call us, let, it, let him equip us, let him encourage us. Whatever you have need of right now, don't wait because I'm telling you, the river is flowing. The river is flowing. Come down here and get in the river. Jump in the river. Come on down right now. I don't want to see any of these guys just standing around with nothing to do. Come down here. They, they're anointed. God has anointed them this morning to do this. He anointed, he spoke it into my spirit in my office this morning before I got here that he was going to use these people to pray for you today. He's going to use them to pray for you today. Line up and let these men and these women pray for you. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on down here. Let's go.
Chris and Eric. You think you're just up here to watch, but get ready. I'm speaking to men, men who maybe you come to church because your wife wants you to. Maybe you uh, are here because it's Sunday and it's just what you do. Maybe you're here because you don't want to let your family down. But there's no burning desire. There's no there's nothing in there that causes you. you. You know the Lord. You know of the Lord. Somebody asks you, you say, yeah, I, I'm a Christian. But you would have to be honest to say you're nominal at best. That you are not on fire for God. And some of you are even in a backslidden state. Knowing the truth but not living the life. And the Lord has reserved these two fellows right here to lay hands on you today and to pray for you because God wants to spark a new fire in your soul. God wants you to lead your family. I'm not trying to embarrass you, but I'm telling you, men, if that's you, if that's you and you have the courage to step out, today is going to be life-changing for you. Today is going to make a difference in your life. It's going to change your life. Right there you go, Brian. Who else is going to come down? How many other men will say, I want, to, I want these guys to pray for me? I want these guys to pray for me. Come on. Come on down. Come on down. Any of those of you men who say, I want them to pray for me. I want to be that spiritual leader in my home. I want to be, I want to be on fire for Jesus. I want my life to matter. I want to do something important for God. We want to pray for you today. Church, we're just waiting on the Lord. I know you're tired. If, you're, if you are tired and you need to sit down, you can sit down. I don't care. Stand up. What do you feel like doing? We're just waiting on the Lord. We're just praying right there where you're at. I just want you to be seeking the Lord. Just praying. Just praying. Worshiping and blessing. Let's let, let's let the Holy Spirit do everything that he intended to do here today. Let's not get in a hurry. Rush out of here. But let's wait. Let's wait on the Lord. So many times we ask him to come and fill our house with his presence. And as soon as he gets here, we leave. Let's wait in his presence. Let's tarry in his presence. And let's hear him. Let's let him speak to us. for a, a new outpouring of the Holy Ghost in your life. If that's you, you're like, I'm just hungry. I want God to set me on fire again. Come on down here right now. Just stand in the front. I'm not, we're not going to lay hands on you. Just come down here. Come down. I just, I'm just coming down, Pastor. I'm going to throw my hands up. I'm just hungry, and I want God to use me, and I want to be full of His power and His Spirit and His presence. Come on, church. If that's you, come on. Come on. They're going to sing this song in a minute, and the Holy Ghost is about to hit these folks that are down here in the front. If you want that, get down here. Come on, get down here. I don't want to miss this, Lord. What you're about to do, I want to be in it. I'm availing myself. I'm bringing myself down, and I'm opening myself up. Come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. All right, Heather, lead us. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go.
God says, I'm about to bring clarity. Your weary mind is going to receive rest. He's not the author of confusion. He is not attempting to confuse you. You're on a, a strategic path, a journey that he created way before you were on the planet. He knows where you are. He knows the pressures and the stresses that you have. And it's not a mistake. Nothing has been a mistake. It's all been preparation for where you are going. It's not yet. It's not yet. But the day is close. The clarity is about to come. Walking in the Spirit as you do continuously walking in the Spirit. Your mind is going to become more open as the time is right. And you will know exactly what that looks like for you, for your wife, and for your children. Raise your hands up in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, confirm your word and give him peace and rest right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. He is see noticing your obedience. He sees your effort. He sees your sacrifice. Ryan, whatever it means, your past is not going to dictate your future. This is the God that brings us through the fire. But sometimes we go through the fire. Sometimes we go through the lion's den. Sometimes the water has to part. But he parts it. Be encouraged. God said, I'm still walking with you. That's what you asked. Did you ask that? Did you ask him to confirm that? Did you say that? What did you say? What did you pray? I just prayed to God. I prayed for direction and clarity, um, but guidance. And to hear him say that he's been with me means that he's still guiding me. He said he is. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for confirming your word to us today. Special blessing. Special blessing. Patience, patience is a necessity for your ministry. So you couldn't get where you're going without what you went through. Patience is a necessity. The good news is God has got you on a path. It's also good news, but might not, like, might, might not feel like it, that patience is still a necessity until faithful, consistent, follow me. Until. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we're just waiting in your presence. We're just hanging around and waiting in your presence, Lord. Amen. If any of y'all get tired and want to go home, go ahead. I don't care. I think I'll hang around here for a minute.
Where's our deacons at? Here's two of them right here. <clears throat> Stephen, I know you're in the room somewhere. I saw you earlier. Dale? Keith's outside. Hey, Keith, if you can hear me, come in here for a minute. Somebody go get Keith. He's out there working in safety. Somebody close enough, step out there. and Aaron, somebody holler at him. Tell him no bad guys are going to come around here right now. Keith, Kendra and Sudi, where'd you go? Where'd Kendra and Sudi go? Where's Sudi? The Lord just says, don't get discouraged. Be faithful in a few things. Huh? You know the rest? It'd be faithful in a few things going to make you ruler over many huh there's a reason he put you together people from every tribe tongue kindred and nation will be in heaven because of your union and your ministry. Amen? Amen. Some of y'all lay hands on them, pray for them. There's an anointing on them right now. You better be careful when you lay hands on them. It might knock you to the ground. We're waiting on Keith. Here he is. church is blessed to have men like you, men like John Lilly, who are currently not serving, but serve, there are others who are blessed to have men like you, men of character and integrity, men who love the Lord and put him and his church first, not above the Lord and not above your family, but you know what I'm saying. You know what it means to prophesy? To prophesy doesn't mean to foretell the future. To prophesy means to be able to boldly proclaim the Word of God. For a long time, people have thought that churches were supposed to operate where that the pastor comes in and preaches and the deacons take care of all the finances. And that's just kind of what they do. And I'm not turning you loose from that. I don't get loose from mine, so you don't get loose from yours. But here's what the Holy Spirit's saying to me. He is raising you up 
John, where are you at? John Lilly? I know you're not on the board right now, but come down here. You will be again. He is raising you up. And elevating your ministry. You won't just be respected and thanked for serving as deacons and trusting trustees of property and facilities. But God says, I'm going to raise you up. Look at me. Everyone, you look at me right now. God says, I'm going to raise you up as prophesying deacons. Your pulpits will look different. But he says, I'm going to raise you up and you will boldly proclaim. You won't just be deacons. You will boldly proclaim my word. You will lead my people. There's a reason why you guys are standing here. God says, I have, I have examined your heart. I have seen into your spirit. Your talents and your abilities vary, but your hearts are the same. Your hearts are after me. So I've ordained you not just to serve in the office of what the world or the church even would recognize as a deacon. I haven't called you to leave your jobs, but I have called you to purpose beyond what you thought when you accepted this position. And in the season, for a time such as I'm about to unleash my presence in this place, there is a reason why you are here. You will be vehicles to introduce my plan and my purpose for what I'm about to do through this place around the world. Amen? Whether that's teaching or preaching or whatever that might be, you guys are already doing all those things. But the Lord says, I, I, I've, got, I've got something special. I've got some. don't overthink that. Don't go out tomorrow and think, man, I'm supposed to quit my job. Don't overthink that. You guys have way too much wisdom for that. I know. That's why you're where you are. But just know, just know the things that he is doing in your spirit, he's doing because he has a plan. And he's going to elevate your position so that you can prophesy with authority to all of us and lead us into this next, this next phase of where we're going. Do you, do you believe that? You, did any of you all feel that in your soul? If you feel that in your soul, lift up both of your hands. You feel that? You guys feel that? Huh? You feel that? Do you feel that? Holy Ghost. Church, if you're close enough, gather around behind us. Lay your hand on the shoulder. Get ready. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, we receive your word. We receive your word. We receive what you're saying, and we are open to what you want to do. In the name of Jesus, now, Holy Ghost, consummate that right now. Consummate your word. Seal that in their soul. Seal that in their spirit right now. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I feel that. John, you feel that. You feel that.
God, fresh, fresh infilling of the Holy Ghost right now on all these guys right now. Fresh infilling of the Holy Ghost. Come on, church. Pray right now. Come on, pray. Work with these guys. Do miracles for these men. Do miracles for these men. Signs and wonders. Yes, Lord. couple I, I don't know who you are I've never seen y'all before you've been praying for a financial miracle some kind of a financial am I right some kind of a financial situation in your life that you've been really worried about praying about amen and the Lord says that it's on the way if you can expect within the next couple of weeks to start seeing some things open up some, some things are gonna open up that's strong right there. Start seeing some things open up. And the direction that you've been uh, that that you've been seeking, he's the way is about to become more clear. But he says that that by you being faithful and and having a heart for him, he has not forgotten. He's gonna take care of you, he's gonna take care of your house, he's gonna take care of your need. Amen. Church, isn't that amazing? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.